Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Titanfall In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the Smart Pistol MK5. This is considered by some to be the most overpowered and unfair weapon in the game, whereas by others it's considered to be the most underpowered and useless weapon in the game. Respawn tried really hard to change up first-person shooters, and they introduced this weapon, which is definitely very unique, and it is controversial. The gameplay that you're going to be seeing is me playing Angel City. I'm going to mix it up between farming, grunts, inspectors, and actually engaging pilots with this weapon. So let's talk about the stats before we offer any sort of opinion as to overpowered or unfair or not. And the first and most important stat about this weapon is its damage. It'll deal 67 damage per shot in, well, any range. I was going to say close quarters combat because I'm used to saying that, but this actually has no damage drop off. That means it will take three shots to kill because pilots in Titanfall have 200 base health, and that's three shots to kill at any range. No matter how far away they are, it's always three shots to kill, and since it needs to triple lock, that's basically one lock to kill a pilot. What's more important is the lock-on range, which on this particular pistol stock is 20 meters, and when you use the advanced targeting, it goes up to 24 meters. So your gain for the advanced targeting attachment is not very much, and the lock-on range really is not that far. It's something that I would call about medium damage range for submachine guns, useless range for shotguns, and well within the optimal damage for assault rifles. So it's a very close range weapon. You really can't do long range engagements with this pistol. One thing that you should note about the advanced targeting attachment is that it changes the lock-on radius. The standard lock-on radius is 45 degrees uh, from wherever you're pointing your pistol or the middle of the targeting, we'll say, hexagon there. And if you use the advanced targeting system, that actually tightens up your lock-on radius and makes it harder to lock on people. That's kind of the trade-off. You get faster locks and you get longer range locks, but it tightens up your targeting so that you actually have to aim at them a little bit more than normal. It drops it from a 45 degree angle to a 36 degree angle to which you lock onto people, which is kind of a fair trade-off. A lot of the guns in this game have attachments like that where you get something nice, but you trade off something else in return. Another important attribute is how long it takes to lock onto somebody. So when it comes to pilots, it takes between about a third of a second and about two-thirds of a second per lock-on to lock onto a pilot. And keep in mind that all pilots require three successful locks to get three shots to kill. So depending on how this is working, that's going to take a, the total lock time up to about one to two seconds just kind of depending on how far away they are and how far away they are from the center of your lock. My understanding is if you have them a dead on, if they're like point blank in your face and you point the reticule right at them, it locks on faster. Whereas the further away they are, uh, if they're cloaked, or if they are, you know, not directly in the center of your radius, it locks on slower. So your time to kill is going to be approximately one to two seconds for pilots, depending on their range. However, for grunts and specters, it locks on much, much faster. It only takes about uh, 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds or 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds to lock on to grunts and specters, which means that you can farm grunts and specters and kill them much, 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 much faster than you can kill a pilot. Speaking of all this lock-on nonsense, it's also important to note that the advanced targeting attachment does does allow you to lock on faster. Unfortunately, the stats for this game aren't fully out yet, and because there's no private matches, I can't accurately test this, but I do know that it does allow you to lock on faster. How much faster? I don't know. Uh, what's one of the reasons I'm using it here is for the faster locks over the suppressor, but it does allow for faster lock-ons, and I thought that would be important. Same thing with the amp pistol. When it comes to rate of fire, that's not entirely applicable on this weapon, except for, of course, if you miss your lock and you go to aim down sights and shoot it, but it fires at 480 RPM, which is kind Kind of slow, that's really more akin to the shotgun, slower than the light machine gun, it's actually a slow rate of fire. Something that you may have noticed in the beginning when we talk about damage is that it had a flat damage, and what that means is that there is no damage or range penalty for using a suppressor on this weapon. Suppressors in Titanfall actually lower the damage of the weapon to cause you to have more shots to kill. Like in Call of Duty, they would just change the range, but in this game, they actually drop the actual damage. However, adding a suppressor to the smart pistol does absolutely nothing. It has no range to drop, it doesn't drop the damage, it doesn't add shots to kill. There's absolutely no drawback and no penalty at all for using a suppressor on this weapon, so that makes this one of the ideal stealth or suppressed weapons in the game. The MK5 has a very fast reload time of approximately one second. That is quite possibly one of the fastest reloading weapons in the game. I didn't say it was the fastest because, again, the full stats aren't out yet, but you can reload this pistol very, 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 very fast, so I never found extended mags to be useful. Why would I use the extended mags attachment over the no penalty silencer or the faster lock-ons when I can reload this fast? I found extended mags to be very useful, very useless because of the fast lock-on speed. And it has very minimal recoil when you aim down sights. 
aim down sights recoil is just naturally very low. I don't know why you would really aim down sight this with this weapon unless you got very desperate and you had to hit people or you wanted to try and snipe them at long ranges. It's really more of a lock-on pistol, but if you do ADS, you won't find very much kick on it. If you've played the Titanfall training, it almost goes without saying, but for those of you that are watching in-depth without playing the game or being familiar with it, I would like to just tell you that this is kind of like the Wanted pistol, if you've ever seen the movie Wanted. It arcs bullets sideways, left, right, it doesn't actually snap to aim for you, but if you get a lock on somebody, you can shoot your bullets sideways out of the gun, and sometimes around corners. It'll show you the trajectory that the bullets have to go to, and if that trajectory intersects a corner, of course it won't work, but sometimes they can sneak around corners when you shoot, and it'll still hit them, which is a smart pistol does for whatever reason get an ADS accuracy penalty when you're in mid-air. The game has coded different accuracies for crouching, running, standing, mid-air, and there's a pretty significant penalty if you aim down sights and shoot this pistol mid-air. I believe that's to encourage you to just try to use mid-air lock-ons, but I thought you should know that there is an accuracy penalty for mid-air fire. Before we move into class recommendations, I'd like to offer my humble opinion as to whether this weapon is overpowered or underpowered, and I'm going to go with underpowered. I don't find this weapon to be OP or too dangerous or too strong. It's time to kill is very slow. I mean, I've never been killed by the smart pistol and said to myself, hmm, if only the other person had spotted me with an assault rifle or a submachine gun and waited that two or three seconds, they never would have been able to kill me. That's never been the reality. The smart pistol is designed for grunt farming mostly and for extremely absurdly high mobility gameplay where you just kind of keep your uh, reticle somewhat near the person while you bounce around the map. The time to kill on the smart pistol is somewhere between a factor of maybe three or four or a factor of ten times slower than the time to kill of any other weapon in the game, so I don't really find it to be a bothersome weapon. When it comes to the attachments, I'm going to recommend two, just kind of depending on what you want to do. Now, I don't think extended mags is very useful at all because of the fast reload time. If you want to farm grunts and specters, if you want to slaughter minions, if you want to kill AI, if you just want to get those attrition points and not have to deal with pilots, I'm going to recommend the suppressor. There's no penalty for it. It's an excellent stealth weapon. You can farm all day and they won't see you on the radar. I'd even run cloak with it. If you want to kill pilots, however, you're going to need to go with advanced targeting. The, you know, slightly lesser degree of lock-on is kind of annoying, but the range is absolutely crucial, and what's most crucial is the speed at which you lock on. You want to be able to lock onto them faster than normal, which will maybe keep you alive. So if you're going for pilots, I would say advanced targeting. If you're farming grunts, go with the suppressor, and honestly, I don't really use this gun very much. I don't find it to be super useful for me. I much prefer the assault rifles and SMGs. Well guys, that's all for this episode of Titanfall In Depth. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you'd like to check out the previous episode, you can click the box on the left, that'll open a new window. The next episode's gonna be on the Spitfire LMG, and as always, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.